All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rosemary Riel. I use she and her pronouns. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Saquon Maka, um, and we are assistant directors and also our source service scholar program leads. And thank you for carving out a little bit of time for our project info session. Um, before we get started, I always like to um, pause, take a breath, um, and share this land acknowledgement um, that we humbly acknowledge that Johns Hopkins University is located on the traditional and contemporary homelands of indigenous people. And our campus resides on the unceded lands of the Piscataway and Susquehannock peoples. And we recognize the endurance, enduring presence of more than 7,000 indigenous peoples in Baltimore City. And um, we also gather from places across the country. We just wanna honor and recognize um, the indigenous peoples of our homelands. Um, so our agenda, we're going to try to share some information and also answer all of your questions as well, so that our goal is that you feel confident in your ideas and transforming your ideas into projects that um, our source service scholars, we could match individuals across the medicine, nursing, and public health schools um, to support your strategic ideas and, and vision. Um, this is a snapshot of today's agenda. Um, since we're a small group, totally feel free at any point to stop <laughs> the information download. If any, if there are any muddy points or if you um, have a comment, uh, if something's unclear or want to have a follow-up question, um, don't hesitate um, to stop us and we're happy to, to make this a little bit more free-flowing. All right, um, and a little bit about our office. I think it's always a good reminder, you all know this, um, that our mission is to engage all the health professional schools with our Baltimore communities and a list of our values that we really try to keep at the center of our programming, reciprocity, justice, service, and collaboration. Um, and at this point, I'm going to pass it over just um, so we all know who else is in the room, name, organization, and maybe you can share what you hope to uh, to gather um, from our time together today. So uh, we can make sure that you get your answers um, that you are, you're coming with. So uh, I'm gonna tap Steph to go first, if you don't mind. No problem. Hey, I am Steph, Energy Justice Network, a national organization to end incineration. And then locally, I organize for the Cleaner Baltimore Coalition. And what I'm hoping to get out of today is um, how I can apply again since I, we're wrapping up today's source project and to see how I can figure out a new project that also expands upon the what I just did with the current student. So that's my uh, what I'm looking for today. Did I answer all the questions? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get myself together. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Portia Johnson. Um, I am the director of community schools for Child First Authority, which is a nonprofit organization here in Baltimore. We partner with 13 Baltimore City schools where we provide resources and supports, wraparound services, and, and after school programming. So um, our organization has partnered with Source in the past. Um, Tyler has been our direct contact who I've been working with um, for quite some time. And so we haven't had um, an intern for the past couple of years, but we got some stuff going on on the organizational level that I think that an intern of this sort would be really helpful in providing um, support to us. So I'm just looking forward to just hearing a little bit more about the application process and being able to complete the application by the deadline. Awesome. Thanks so much. And I'll give, um, I'll turn it over to Saquon to do a little bit more introduction of his background and then uh, present on the next few slides. So hi everyone. Um, nice to see some familiar faces. Uh, my name is Zev Saquon Maka. I am one of the assistant directors here at Source. Um, and just looking forward to hearing about some of the project ideas and trying to connect some of the dots for you all if we're, if we're uh, missing anything. So hopefully we can we can get some stuff done. And oh this... yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. And for the next slide, uh, we just want to touch upon um some of the the guiding principles for partnerships. Uh, these are the the guiding principles that uh, John Hopkins University as a whole has adopted that we are trying to hold uh, our, ourselves and our partner, like 
ourselves accountable for. So um, just like shared vision and values, mutuality and respect, transparency and communication, shared decision making and commitment. Um, and you can kind of see this is a definition of service learning, um, a structured learning experience that combines community service with preparation and reflection. Um, emphasis on the on the preparation and the reflection part. Um, and then also just uh, rem remembering that service learning uh, in the community service context is to provide community identified concerns and to help the students learn in the context as at, at the same time as serving um, the company, the community and the, the student and the population that that entails. So it's a, but I'm pretty sure everybody here gets service learning and is, yeah. Um, all right, just a little bit about our SSS program in case you haven't heard already. Um, it's a long-term commitment, meaning that it's an academic school year. So that means that it goes from August through May. Um, it requires about 150 service hours, uh, which can be on-site or off-site, depending on your community-based organization's needs. Um, we, we do ask that uh, the students and the CBOs can maintain a consistent presence. So the students should be working at least three to four hours per week. Um, this uh, opportunity is open for any students that are enrolled in our uh, JHU professional schools, which is a school of public health, school of uh, medicine, and the school of nursing, specifically the graduate schools. Uh, so the students are coming with a unique set of skills on their own. Um, a lot of them have been out of, uh, they're not just like straight from undergrad to, to grad school. A lot of them have been out of school for a certain amount of time and have a, a, are bringing a unique set of skills. Um, last thing to know is that the scholar also has to do uh, has an aspect of the project where they have to bring their own team of volunteers, where they will be pulling the volunteers from the tri school. So they will be pulling uh, volunteers from public health, medicine, and nursing, their colleagues and their cohort to help um, on on the project that they've identified in some way, way, shape, or form. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so in addition to having to mobilize a team, so, you know, you're not only getting the service scholar, but the service scholar will be part of the recruitment. We all want you to think about um, your ideas as sort of a lot of the projects are strategic projects, so they're not necessarily um, uh projects that are ongoing or programming that's ongoing, although that could be part of the orientation of the scholar and volunteers is to support some programming. But really they also receive training and guidance from our office um, just on service learning theory and reflection because it's a, a, students are coming from across the three schools. We've also focused on interprofessional competencies um, and again, project management, volunteer recruitment, and reporting on the outcomes. And so those trainings are delivered through our service academy sessions. So in addition to the 150 hours that they will commit to your the project that you're proposing, um, they'll also um, be participating with us on these seminars. So, you know, we're here to accompany them, um, to again, continue preparing them, orienting them, and uh, supporting uh, them throughout the, the process, throughout the academic year. So while you all are the on-site preceptors and are really helping to contextualize the project and, and build relationships with your staff and client communities, we're here to help them as well, you know, bridge the link um, to their professional and personal adult development. And so again, all of these projects, the, the biggest umbrella is that they're Baltimore focused, they're social justice oriented collaborations. Um, and again, as Saquon mentioned, there's options really for on-site and hybrid. Um, really we've moved back at, at, at emphasizing on-site, at least in the beginning while they're getting to know you and your staff and your preceptors, really helping them to contextualize um, Baltimore, the social justice issues that you all are addressing. And then um, certainly the engagement can move into more of a hybrid and online space as you sort of establish your rapport and your relationship. And so we do accept fully remote service, um, but you need to really specify that um, in your proposal. And as we know, we're coming out of COVID, we know that remote can work, um, but we just love to be able to um, help vision with you so that we can manage expectations um, of the source of the scholars, of the scholars themselves, um, as well about the formatting of the service collaboration. And um, I'll hand it over to Saquon to talk a little bit about the projects. <laughs> Hi, 
Sorry. Just about the projects. Um, so as I stated already, it's a year long and uh, it's a, a, a position where they'll have two preceptors to uh, supervise them as they go uh, do their project. Right now, we're looking to uh, have 15 source service scholars. So that means 15 projects. Uh, we accepted eight projects in the first round. This is our second round and we're looking to accept seven more. Um, so this, this just uh, one thing to really think about when you're uh, exploring opportunities for a project, this student coming to you will not be an intern, but uh, more of a project manager. So the student, um, the student works on a single project from start to finish, whereas the intern might come on for more generalist, uh, generalist day-to-day -day tasks. Mm -hmm. um, so right here is just a, a uh, a slide that really illustrates the difference between an intern and a, a, a project manager. So if you see the difference are the differences are that it's a specific project uh, which they which they're interviewed for and they're scheduled to complete. Um, a project manager uh, mutually designs a plan of action with a final de uh, deliverable, and um, they bring a team of volunteers to manage as well. Um, and lastly, the project plan and strategy Morse has needed uh, to move the project into completion. So they are they know that they have to be flexible, and that they they know that um, that it's a fluid situation. Also, one thing that I wanted to add to that is that the project managers will also be looking at um, longevity and continuity. So, like trying to find um, so because they're there for the academic year, making sure that there's some type of continuance. Um, when they leave and they're not there anymore. So if they're designing an aspect of your program, also making sure that it's sustainable as well um, yeah. without them. Yeah, and I will mention, um, you know, these are just our distinctions. We understand that in some organizations, you may need to like frame the role as an intern right. just because that's the way that um, your organization can accept external um, like student support. And so we understand that as well. And also like even assisting and getting to know the regular programs, having them volunteer and having them shadow and attend a, a few meetings, all of that um, can be a part of their orientation to your organization. So it's not like, oh, um, that they can't do the those activities. We really see those as like introductory activities, but it should at some point move into this project manager role where you're then really focused on moving a strategic idea or a strategic um, goal forward for you. Um, and so we'll have some more examples of that. Yeah, a best a best practice would actually be like for your onboarding, doing some of that general stuff like almost treating the student as an intern, like Rosemary said, that's been really successful for like the orientation, the onboarding processes with previous um, scholars. Yeah. And this is just a list of some, what the CBO preceptors are expected to do. So we need two points of contact for your organization. That helps with continuity, just because we know that sometimes um, uh, there's turnover in organizations. And so that really helps us to, to be able to feel confident that, um, if folks leave or have vacation or something like that, there's another person at the organization that can help support and answer some questions that the, the scholar may have. Um, we have a preceptor module online that's required. So that's part of our training um, for our mentors. Um, again, really recruiting, um, supervising the scholar primarily, but then also oversight on the recruiting the volunteers. So just establishing regular and frequent meetings. And again, that's usually upfront and establishing just communication ways that meet your needs and sort a lot of expectation settings in the beginning, and then being available to one another, um, reciprocal kind of availability to have some guidance along the way, um, completing a mid and a final evaluation of, of the scholar's project and experience, verifying their hours. Um, we use a, a platform called Hopkins Engage. We'll learn a little bit more about that. And again, remain flexible. Again, really focused on helping you all advance a strategic area that kind of a wish project that you would love to have but don't have time for. This is what the 150 hours could, could look like for you. And these are just some of the categories of, of past projects, ones that implemented um, health education curriculum, some community outreach if you're looking to expand your reach, um, advocacy work, 
program design, and then again, it could be capacity building. So that's what that service extension of your organization. Um, mm -hmm. So that, you know, let's say that you need to build out your volunteer program or create some resources, or you want to pilot um, a, a program. So it can be enhancing and strengthening your existing programs as well. Um, and again, you know, it could be the creation of a volunteer management or if you wanted to refine some of your training processes for volunteers or for others, um, other stakeholders, um, that's, you know, those are just some examples in the past. Um, does anyone have any questions right now um, about that, just sort of the project examples? If folks... Um, uh, we have one question in the chat. Oh, cool. Um, Thank you. 150 hours is about how many hours per week? Mm -hmm. the course of, yeah, it, it translates to about the three to four. Yeah, three, three to three to four to five. And so and we will share your um the academic year calendar with, you know, because they're not necessarily required to work, of course, during vacations, during the winter break. Um, and so but it is between three to five hours a week. Um, and we tell them, you know, it's particularly if it's on site, um, that, you know, we don't expect you all to work on the weekends, you know, so this, you know, if you have, you know, if there are our weekend commitments, of course, scheduled, that could be make sense. But, you know, it's really becoming a part of the culture of your organization. So if your organization has business hours that you where you're serving your, your clients, then, you know, we'll work there. And then if there's extra work on the side and, you know, oh, they need to do it on the weekends, et cetera. But that's a lot of where the communications and the expectations settings, just so, you know, as your schedule changes and their schedules change during throughout the academic year, you can adapt and just like be clear about, you know, committing blocks of time. That's something that Saquon and I do a lot with as advisors to the scholars is to like have blocks of time um, set out of that's when you're going to have committed time um, just to be respectful of, of one another's. So great question. Um, and then these are just, um, we'll have a couple of slides to the role of the scholar and then the role of the volunteer. So as a part of the application, you'll see one of the questions of, you know, well, what, you know, are the objectives of the project? You know, what are some scholar activities and what are the potential volunteer activities? So volunteers, again, they minimally, they'll need to bring on at least four other students across the tri-school to participate with them in the project and it could be a one-time or an ongoing volunteer so it, it really depends on the scope of what your project is um, a number of our cbo um, partners like they bring volunteers to do some of their ongoing programming and that's and that's possible too um, and then they like translate translate you know once they've done a one-time like let's say you have a a big event um, where you need support those could be volunteers that your scholar brings them on board for. But then it also like, you know, once they get some context about your organization, you know, they could also support the um, the project and the student as well through through some implement, ongoing implementation. So um, and so these are just a couple of examples. And these slides will be shared with you all as well if you want to like take a, a look at, at them as well. Um, and then advocacy and service extension. Again, what's the role of the scholar and what could be some potential role of the of the volunteers so that, you know, when you come together, you can come together and, and create a draft of, of what the ask is. And then we can put that out throughout our networks. I might pause right now. So Steph might be able to give Portia an, an example since Steph is a current preceptor of a project um, and how her scholar was able to utilize volunteers. I think sharing an example might help build out that a little bit more. Okay, yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so my project proposal was on zero waste education and outreach. And so we um, together brainstormed like what that would look like. And so um, I was in the big, and it changed. I thank goodness for the flexibility because uh, that was, uh, great to acknowledge in the beginning and like the expectation was set forward that things could change. Um, but we did um, like a reuse station at the farmer's market. She helped me with that. Um, the materials that we needed to 
uh, provide, to bring, to create, to bring, to distribute. Um, she helped me with outreach and getting people signed up to be a member of our coalition. Um, and uh, she recruited some volunteers to help me with um, creating stuff on our website um, that were like really savvy into that. And what else? Um, so it was mostly just like the support I needed because I'm an office of one. So it was a big support to have someone else to brainstorm with, to make a plan for execution with. And then uh, the weekly check-ins were really easy to do. I just, we always had a, a standing meeting. Um, and then again, didn't meet over break and stuff. So allowing for breaks and personal space and time. Um, I think that answers the question. Um, but that's how I use my student and I'm looking forward to the feedback from <laughs> Alyssa so I can see um, how to improve and make it better for next time. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So they were like one time volunteering. And so the volunteering, again, it sounded like a lot of it was community outreach and some supporting the program. So Steph was um, new to the organization. The organization was a new partner of ours. And so a lot of this was helping build out infrastructure and some some capacity building. And so, you know, what the sustaining piece is, is like, hopefully, like now there are um, the scholar will be leaving like a transition document of just like, this is what we did. You know, this is how you staff or this is what we did for outreach so that, you know, folks that come on board can, can continue that work. Um, and then this is Hopkins Engage. Portia, are you familiar with Hopkins Engage at all? With Child? No. Okay. So Child First Authority and all of our partners do have an, like an affiliate page. So this is a online platform. Um, it's it's hosted by GivePulse, but um, our system is Hopkins Engage. And um, whether it's you or there may be another person from your organization that has been tapped as the administrator. Um, but this is an online platform where um, you can utilize if it's helpful for your organization um, to promote events and recruit volunteers. And it's another place where, um, again, a dashboard where our scholars could meet um, and report out and a place to meet with their preceptors as well. And so this is a place where they will report their hours and that you can um, uh, verify the hours that they're working. We kind of require them to, you know, put their hours in bi-weekly and then at least our preceptors, if, um, you know, to at least verify them, they can verify them as they go along or minimally, you know, once a month or a couple times a month. But this is a way to kind of keep track. And then it also helps us as well, if there are any like red flags or any gaps in communication, how can we bring folks back on on board to the uh, project project work. Portia, do you have any um, questions as we move along about the projects? Do you have a project that you wanna share with us, an idea? Yeah. So we, our organization is concluding um, an evaluation that we went through, just evaluating our services, our programming and the work that we're doing across schools. And as we have entered into this last phase of it, we realized that we were not ready to do an evaluation that was outcomes driven, but rather an evaluation that's more of a process evaluation and really taking a deep dive into the work that it is that we're doing and making sure that we're doing it with fidelity across all of our schools. Mm -hmm. So I thought that this would be a perfect space for um, a scholar such as this to kind of do that beginning work of, and kind of almost like, figuring out for us what does that process evaluation look like um, and beginning the groundwork of that evaluation by examining the work that we're doing across all 13 of our schools and being able to kind of drive down where are the areas specifically that we need to improve our services, where should we be making some changes and utilize um, that sort of project for this. So yeah. maybe it's, it's giving a little bit of... Um, the you know, program, program design. Well, the, yeah, yeah, the program assessment, three of our scholars this year worked with organizations kind of precisely on what you're talking about. They had either a specific program or a specific area that they had questions about. And it was more of a, 
um, a research design, not research, again, program assessment, quality improvement kind of piece, but it sounds like if you've already kind of done your initial program evaluation, programs evaluation, and you have a lot of school stakeholders, um, and it's kind of like, how do you know, what's the next step based on that? I love, I love the fact of like, oh, that a scholar can walk in and, and have some starting material. <laughs> to and and kind of work with you on like oh what's the like next direction um just a couple of, of examples so we had one scholar that um was working with reading partners and they wanted to know where their reading partner volunteers were coming from so did a very like geospatial <laughs> um like assessment of their data so like they had data and so the scholar came in and was able to like help them kind of do some assessment of information that they collected about their volunteers so they could understand like retention and recruitment. So like, that's like one example. Another example is uh, another organization wanted to know, is their media advocacy working? <laughs> and so how do we capture, how do we know if our media strategies or our activities are helping in our advocacy efforts? And so, um, that a student worked with um, the preceptor and the organ again, kind of a largest organization as well, but like to talk about like, well, what some of those measures could look like. Um, so what you're speaking about right now, I mean, I think is something that could be in someone's wheelhouse for sure. As, as Saquon mentioned, these students are, you know, health professional students, but they are also come with a lot of different um, gifts and skills. Yeah. Great. Um, let's see, we've moved on around here. Um, this is just the, so the deadline is Monday, May 15th, um, in a, about a week and a half. We'll follow up on the proposals. Um, and basically, if we have some questions, we turn your responses into like these one pagers that will be the project descriptions that then get included when we um, recruit students. So we'll actively recruit students for the seven projects um, in June and July, they'll have an application deadline in July. Um, and so this will also um, be available to incoming students. So incoming masters of public health students, incoming medical students, incoming nursing students. Um, and then um, after our internal uh, team reviews the applications, we will send kind of the top three um, candidates that have scored to you all. So they, those names and information, they go to the CBO. So you all have an opportunity to meet and interview the candidates and rank and score them. So we'll send you all of their materials. We hand it over to the candidate to say, you know, contact the CBOs. We, get, we give you a heads up of like, these are the folks that are contacting you. Um, but there will be like about a two week period where we will want you to set up um, the interviews with each of the candidates, like again, up to three, I think we've had before, cause it's been like tight, but really um, you'll have about a couple of weeks. And then at the end of that period, we'll ask you all to give us your rankings. And that's an opportunity to say, yes, you know, this is how I rank the three people that we interviewed, or we really actually think only one of the three are a good fit. So, you know, that's, you know, an opportunity to say, oh, to give us the feedback. And then students also rank. So some of the students, we, we've we just adapted our student applications. They'll look at the projects and they can rank up to two. In previous years, we've had them rank up to three, but that was that got a little hectic. <laughs> um, and so we have them rank. So some students will get one interview, some up to two, um, and then we'll kind of do a lot of matching and again, this program, because there's 15 and of how our the program is funded, the aim is to have five medical students, five nursing students, and five public health students. And um, so that's the general goal. We do like to have um, as close to possible a, a, a equal distribution, but sometimes that doesn't work out just because of the scores or we don't get a lot of applicants from one school over the other. So it hasn't always been 555, five, five, but that's in general um, another part of the calculus once we look at the rankings. And so, and then after that, we offer the opportunity to the students. Um, you all will have the summer to complete some online modules and to complete some onboarding with us. 
um, as well. And then early September is when we really begin our face-to-face -face sessions with the scholars um, to begin that work plan development and rapport building and, and your orientation. And then eight to nine months later, as of today, so today we're actually having our final celebration Same. today um, in our appreciation event. And so we'll put that date on everyone's calendar and it's a really a beautiful opportunity for preceptors and uh, scholars and some other volunteers also. So again, this is a uh, unique to our program is you're not just getting one student, you're getting a student who's going to lead a small team. So the way that you use those volunteers can be creative um, it's not meant to be cumbersome, but it, you know, they're meant to be extenders to get other advocates to um, kind of onboard um, and to be um, supporters of your organization. So I'm going to stop there right now um, and see if there's any questions um, on the information that we've shared and just the general processes of what happens after the project proposals. I will say if by chance your project isn't supported, we have a number of programs <laughs> that do support um, that will continue will continue to brainstorm with you. Um, Source SA Kwan and I have both learned have a, a couple of different kinds of um, programs. This and our Baltimore Action Projects, they're year-long projects, so there are like longest term projects. And so that's why we ask you sort of strategically and, you know, do you have the support and infrastructure to support a uh, year long? But we have other projects that are also group projects or individual projects that could be, could advance a, a part of your project as well. So just because if, if by chance your project isn't supported here, we will work with you to adapt the project idea to potentially meet another one of source programs. So we've done that before um, as well. So we just love that you've carved out a little bit of time to talk with us <laughs> so we can see how we can make it work. All right. Um, we're just going to go through these. I'm going to pass over. We're going to go through these frequently asked questions relatively quickly, and then we can go back and see what other support and information we could provide for um, for the two of you and your proposals. So <clears throat> the first first kind of question is that a proposed project is really for one student internship project. Is it suitable for a source service scholar project? And the answer to that is it needs to be something that the student can project. Uh, uh, it needs to be a, uh, it needs to be something the student can project, project manage a student team and provide a final deliverable for an academic school year. So as long as it meets the, uh, the, the eligibilities of that, then if it's if you have, as Rosemary said before, if you have to frame it as an intern for your organization, that's fine. Um, I've had a source service scholar in the past. Can I apply for one again? The answer to that is yes, but the proposal, and Steph, <laughs> yes, but the proposal cannot be identical. Um, even so, even if it's, uh, you can even have something similar or you can even have something that's like building upon the previous service project, but you cannot have duplicates. Um, why do we need two preceptors from our organizations? As Rosemary said before, there's turnover, people get sick, life happens. So we always wanna make sure that there's at least one more per point of contact in case. Um, how many hours per week will the scholar work and will they be working a regular schedule? They are supposed to be working three to five hours a week to, uh, to equate to 150 hours over the academic school year, which is August through May. And, um, and it can be done hybrid, remote, uh, in person, really based on the needs of you and your organization. I'm a busy professional. How much supervision is needed uh, of the scholar? Yes, we respect your time. We understand that you're busy. So preceptors um, have the capacity to establish supervision hours based on their own schedule. Um, I would a, a good question that we kind of should probably ask our preceptors is like how much time they spent with their uh, service scholar. I think it really depends on the project. Um, Steph, if you if you want to uh, chime in on how much time you kind of spent with your with your scholar a week, it maybe maybe provide some insight. Yeah, it really depended on where we were at and what was needed, but we always had a standing weekly meeting, so I could always count on the same hour of every week where we would 
um, check in and go over things together. And then depending on like the events, like some of the events that we did were like four to five hours. So that's an example of, so we always have the Stanley standing hour meeting. Um, and then it varied depending on time of year and project. Um, gotcha. Thanks for that insight. Room. Thanks for that insight. Um, yeah, so uh, if you have any questions or want to uh, follow up about a project, um, please let us know. Um, if you're having writer's block and the Qualtrics survey is just like, I ah, can't figure it out, you can schedule a meeting with us and we will walk you through it. Um, if you submit a project proposal and it's not suitable for a source service scholar, that's not a no. We will refer you to a project that it can work with. Um, and if you are interested in seeing how this year's uh, SSS uh, session or program went, um, we are having a uh, we're having our closing ceremonies today. Um, Rosemary, did you have anything that you wanted to add on? No. Um... Yeah, just I, I wanted to say exactly that, you know, fill, go ahead, fill it out. Tell us what your ideas are. Um, again, we translate, we give ourselves another week or two weeks to follow up with you all um, on some of the basic points. A lot of it are, you know, what are the objectives um, of the, act, you know, what are some activities? What's the role? You know, how would you orient the student or, you know, the scholar to your organization. And so um, those are some of the questions on the application. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions around that, um, Portia, I, I think your idea was really good. And I think the, oh, the challenge for our partners too is just because, you know, that Source Service Scholar pr Project is you have, we're really offering you a program lead, a project leader, that could then organize a potential of up to four other students. Again, some of our pro from some of our scholars have brought on more than that. Some have just like brought on brought them on just for one time things because the scope of the work was really like it was you know didn't, wasn't something that needed ongoing help. Um, so I think that's always the the challenge. And some of our other programming are individuals that need a deliverable and. You know, again, so there are other outlets depending on how um, it's described, what you're offering. Um, and then again, in the fall, we have our community uh, consultant, connect, community connections consultants, which again is another team approach, but the driver, it's a short term project. And so again, we could always um, uh, look at your project and say, oh, this looks like a first component this is something that could work with another one of our source programs. And so um, hopefully folks feel confident about submitting something new for you, Steph. Really think about different deliverables. Think about, you know, you can build on the things that your scholar has done, but what are some areas? Or, you know, how can you continue to um, continue with the sustainability plan? again, that's something that we really challenge both our preceptors and our students to think about while they're doing the projects. All right. I do have a quick question. Please. Um, probably a technical one. Oh. So I started the application mm -hmm. and I wrote like test in the word boxes so I could see what all the questions were, but uh -huh. now I can't go back. Oh no. Edit. Okay. You You might just, can you start a new application? Yeah, I'll probably just yeah you should my browser yeah, yeah and just just start a new just start just start a new one. It's it's easier for us because we just we'll just see the test one and just disregard it. Okay. So yeah, for sure. Okay. Or yeah, either clear out or use a different um, search engine. But you should be able to start a different application. And you know what? Don't worry if you have to start a couple of different times. We'll probably just look at your last one or the one that you signed. <laughs> Whichever, one, whichever so, one's complete and that you signed is what we'll look at. Exactly, because we do know that there's technical difficulties. So <laughs> no, that's great. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for you. So hopefully folks feel confident. And again, you know, please don't hesitate to circle back um, with us with any questions. And we look forward to reviewing your proposals. Yeah, cool. Thanks for your support. It's uh, Thank it was you. helpful. Thanks, Portia. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Steph. All right. Bye now.